I want to just revamp my tiny closet today, add in some more practical storage solutions and really go through my entire wardrobe to declutter. Lifestyle is very important to think about. What am I mostly wearing in this season of life? Okay, people are going to tell me I'm crazy, but I believe it. <laughs> Heavy. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm taking on yet another home project. I've filmed in my tiny master bedroom many times. Literally the only thing we can fit in here is our bed and two little nightstands. There is no room for any other dresser or anything like that. On top of that, our closet is tiny. It only fits my things. Richie's stuff doesn't even go in there. He keeps it in a dresser in the guest bedroom in the basement. <laughs> Thank you, Richie. In addition, it's also just a strange shape and like the way the door is there and then the closet goes that way. So it's just not the easiest master bedroom closet to work with. When we first moved in, there was absolutely nothing in there. It was just an empty rectangle, not even a rod, no system in place, nothing. So, which was kind of nice because then I was able to just start from scratch. Like, what do I need in this to actually make it more practical? So we went to Ikea to find the perfect system. I went with the Ardal system. The way it's positioned, I was able to get like rods going that way to hang things that right in the middle. And then a few rods going that way. I had someone from um, TaskRabbit to install it. I think they had to cut down a couple of the rods to make it like custom and fit correctly but it was really just the best option out there that I found and the most like cost friendly. It's decent enough, um, but I don't think it's like the long-term solution. Eventually we would love to get Richie's stuff back into our room. So for the time being, I'm doing what I do best and that's working with what I got. I wanna just revamp my tiny closet today, add in some more practical storage solutions and really go through my entire wardrobe to declutter. Let's take you on a little tour. Here it is. Honestly, it's not too messy. Although these shelves always look pretty messy because if I don't perfectly put things back, there's no hiding it. And so one of the first things I need to do is actually add two more pull out drawers right here that I just picked up from Ikea so that we can hide things away a little better. Yeah, so we've got two short little rods here and then this is the side that gets a little deeper and actually some of Richie's suits are still back here but I think I'm gonna transfer these down to the basement again and this is where like my dresses go so down here I've got shoes in a Tupperware that are just thrown around more shoes under here because I just have not figured out a good shoe system and then this is like more Tupperware with um, bathing suits and vacation items yeah could be worse, right? I am now 10 months postpartum. I don't know when you stop like actually doing the math on that. The point is my closet hasn't been updated in a very long time. And I still have lots of like pregnancy and postpartum items in there that just don't fit me anymore. I'm also a very busy mom of three. I laughed about this in my last video, but like I don't consider myself like fashion forward. I just feel like that's something I'm still trying to figure out. What I find important right now is to make things as simple as possible when it comes to getting dressed because I don't have a lot of time and effort to put into these things. So for me, that just means like easy outfits to put together, easy things that I can mix and match. Being comfortable is very important to me and items that are okay to get messy because Everything's getting messy every single day with my children. <laughs> Quick interruption because I wanna chat about jewelry as I'm going through my jewelry collection. It's actually pretty minimal because a couple years ago when I did this video, I got rid of so much jewelry and it's just remained minimal ever since. Today's video is sponsored by Ana Luisa Jewelry, which I've worked with many times in the past and they've been pretty essential in helping me build my minimal jewelry collection that's still high quality. I keep this in the closet because it's stuff I don't wear as often. And then I keep this beautiful little piece that I thrifted in my bathroom with my kind of most worn jewelry that I just grab on a daily basis. As you can tell guys, I'm very minimal with my jewelry. I don't even wear a lot. What I wear on a daily basis is very like kind of dainty, minimal, simple. So I have a few pieces from Ana Luisa that I've had for years now. And what I love about them is that they are long lasting. I really don't like cheap jewelry that goes bad in water or leaves gross residue. I try to stay away from those. These are great quality. Every single piece is rigorously strength and humidity tested. And these are long lasting, tarnish resistant essentials that you can feel good about wearing. I'll be chatting more about seasonal color analysis in this video, but gold jewelry 
is best on my skin tone and this green also is so that's why i picked this beautiful one out designs start at 39 dollars, so it is very affordable still compared to other quality jewelry brands modeling jewelry feels weird <laughs> so anywhere in the u.s they've got you covered with free and fast shipping if you're outside of the u.s they still have very affordable shipping options if you're in the market for some good affordable high quality jewelry and you want to try this out you can use my link in the description and my code nicole for 20 percent off really glad that i purged this a few years ago because it's been like pretty easy since then to keep my collection minimal. I looked back on my YouTube channel to see the last time I did my like minimalism wardrobe declutter and that was in June of 2022. That's like two years ago already, but that video was very extreme. It was when I used to do my let's get minimal series and it was intense. I took my wardrobe down to 52 pieces. Like I counted everything. It was a capsule wardrobe very minimal. So the question is, am I still trying to be minimal? Yes-ish. I really like the practicality and mindful consumption, but I just don't think it needs to be so like colorless and cold and dull, which is kind of what tends to be what comes to people's mind. I think that there can be color and warmth and fun. So I feel like I just have my own new take on minimalism now that is way less boring. If you guys remember that video, I used literally this list to narrow down my wardrobe. It's very precise. And I ended up donating a lot of things that I later regretted. Like I remember thinking like, oh, where's this thing? I wanna wear it today. And then I would go to look for it and I'm like, shoot, I must have gotten rid of that when I did my crazy minimalism video. And what I should have done is just like put it in a bin and stored it away. And then if I reach for it, okay, then I still keep that item. And if I don't reach for things for like a six month period, then I officially donate it. I feel like that's where I went wrong. So all that to say, it was just very extreme. And I don't plan on being that extreme in this video, but I will still have like a general minimalism mindset and i'll be sharing specific tips with all of you especially for moms who are dealing with a small closet space okay the first thing that i actually want to do you guys might be surprised by this but i want to remove this barn door <laughs> i never really liked it not a fan and to be honest it doesn't even work it was installed terribly and so it, it's like so hard to move it open and close i never close the closet that the thing's always open Oh my god, I should look that one up. Do kids have seasonal depression? And toss your wrist in the opposite direction that he was doing. Yikers. Oh my god, this thing's heavy. Okay, so much better. <laughs> I'm gonna have to fill in those holes up there at some point. All right, let's go through some minimalism rules and tips. Keep your closet current. Does it serve you right now in the season you're in, not in six months when you want to lose 20 pounds. <laughs> oh my God, these are so tight. I can't breathe. Should fit your body, your lifestyle. What I'm gonna do is anything that I want to get rid of, I'm gonna actually just put it in a bin in the basement. And of course, like I mentioned before, if I reach for it, okay, then it's something I'll end up keeping. But all the things that I don't reach for within like a six month period then those will officially get donated that way in case i do lose 20 pounds i can grab some of those things that maybe then fit me out of season so you know this doesn't apply to everybody because some people don't have all four seasons but i have all four seasons right now we are kind of in between that like winter slash spring it's starting to get a little bit warmer so i can sort of start putting away like things like this that are very heavy knits okay next tip is such a good one for moms I'm obsessed with this, talked about it in my recent Q&A. It's the seasonal color analysis. I will link a video down below of a helpful one that can kind of help you figure out what your seasonal color might be. Apparently you're supposed to go to like a real expert to figure this out. Usually it's like a couple hundred dollars. It's pretty useful because you can get swatches of colors that actually look fantastic on you and make you look better. You can use that for years to come to start building your wardrobe. Like this just takes us all back to that concept of minimalism, functionality, very easy pieces that you can put together, like so good for busy moms. I haven't done that yet. So I kind of just did a ton of research 
and did my best to figure out my color season, which is deep autumn. What that taught me <laughs> is that I really, I really haven't been wearing the correct colors apparently for years. Okay, you know when someone wears a color and you're like, wow, that color looks so good on you, but it's like, why does that color look so good on them? And it all has to do with your undertones, your hue and your value. So it takes all that into an account and comes up with a palette of colors that work best for your skin and hair and face that apparently make you look better. <laughs> okay, here's a good example of what I'm trying to explain. <laughs> This green, pretty good. Even like a deeper green would be even better than this. Like a teal would be like ideal on my skin tone. There's that, now I'm gonna hold up sky blue, very cool toned sweater. And just pay attention to my face. <laughs> skin, tone, texture, it just, my face just doesn't look right. It just looks off. Okay, people are gonna tell me I'm crazy, but I believe it. <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm running out to the store and buying an entirely new wardrobe with only these colors because that's, crazy. I am just now going to be taking this all into account when I am shopping and thinking through, does this make sense Which with my wardrobe? Want to keep things more long-term that look better on me. <laughs> Lifestyle is very important to think about. What am I mostly wearing in the season of life? Well, I'm a busy <laughs> mom that wants to be comfortable, wants to be able to move quick, wants clothes that can get messy and dirty most of the time, and it's like an easy wash, throw it in the wash and it's done, not a bunch of like super gentle or delicate things that I'm gonna have to hand wash. I think that comfy mom clothes slash lounge wear is the highest percentage of my wardrobe. I think it's about 50% of the time that I'm wearing clothes like that. So that's like sweatsuits, leggings, t-shirts, like, things that can get messy, things that I'm just throwing on on the daily to be with my kids, to be like out and about at the park, in the yard, whatever. 20% would be like athletic wear. And I kind of, these two can sort of be combined in a sense because I still do wear athletic wear even around my kids too. So it's kind of together, but also that's like working out when I'm going to play volleyball. Um, so yeah, if you combine those 56, that's 70% goes to like the comfy mom clothes slash athletic wear. That's making up most of my wardrobe. And then 20% for like outing slash weekend wear is what I called it. Cause that would be like, oh, maybe I want to look a little bit nicer cause I'm going out somewhere with the family or I'm going to church. I need to look more put together. And then 10% is like special occasion slash maybe vacation wear because it's such a small percentage. Obviously that's not happening many times throughout the year. So I feel like after I take my time and declutter and see what's all left that I'm keeping, I need to take those percentages into account and it should like kind of be in that ballpark. And if it isn't, well, that means that I need to spend less money on, you know, like special occasion wear and more money on lounge wear in the future as I'm shopping. Okay, I just did some sorting out to see where I'm at percentage wise with my stuff. This is all like lounge wear slash daily wear, athletics, stuff I wear, you know, most of the time, which I feel like is taking up most of my wardrobe. So that's making sense so far. These are all more like going out weekend, you know, dressing up a little bit more, which is supposed to be, I think it was 25%. And then in my closet back here is where I still have like my special occasion dresses, some vacation wear stuff, which seems to be like definitely on the lower side. So I feel like I'm in the right direction. I think just keeping those percentages in mind whenever I shop is going to be very, very helpful so that I'm not overspending in one area. Next tip, keep everything visible, as visible as you can. My closet is a very interesting shape. You literally can't see almost anything on that side of that wall. So this is a little bit tricky for me. Most of my clothes are gonna be hanging on rods and I think keeping things visible, the best way to do that is to have things on hangers. This will help you to not buy duplicates. It'll help you to see what you have so that you are actually reaching for it and it's getting 
used. It's helpful with drawers is to fold vertically and stacking them vertically or even rolling them. I use, I do that method with my kids' clothes too because it's easier for them to see what they have to pick out their clothes. In this case, with my Argel system, the visibility aspect just looked way too messy to keep the top open like that. So I did have to add in two more roller drawers from Ikea. They were super easy to build and install. So that gave me some extra space to store things away that didn't actually need to be hung on rods. And once I shifted up the shelving, I actually had space up here to put all my shoes on display up on the top instead of having them all over the floor. And of course, put your most used items in the easy to reach spaces. So in the furthest back corner there of my rod will be special occasion, gowns, things I'm not really reaching for very often. And this whole area will be the things I'm reaching for a lot more. Next tip is a 15 second rule that I learned. So apparently if something is taking longer than 50, 15 seconds to do, then you're less likely to do it. If you have a special folding situation for your shirt or pants and it's just taking too long to apply that, then you're not gonna be able to keep it up. Doing a folding that is quick and easy, rolling is super easy, so I like that. For me, I hang most of my pants, but they're starting to take up a lot of room and I've always just used regular hangers, but I found these layered hangers where you can actually layer your pants and fit more than one pair of pants on one single hanger. So I think that with my small closet, that's gonna work perfectly. Okay, next tip is to just section out your wardrobe with similar items together. That's a pretty obvious one. <laughs> Short sleeves, long sleeves, pants, dresses. <laughs> You don't wanna go into too much detail with that because you're not gonna be able to keep it up. With drawers, I have always gone with the extendable dividers. Anytime I've done an organization video, I like almost have just refused to spend money <laughs> buying the little square organizing separator things. Um, but I finally gave in for this video because I just feel like depending on what you're organizing, you may need one or the other. If it's larger, chunkier pieces like pants or shirts i think the divider works just fine but when we're getting into like way smaller items like underwear socks belts those little ones are definitely useful to buy so i bought kind of a variety of sizes from ikea okay last rule is to make your closet pretty <laughs> um the truth is the more appealing your closet looks the more likely you are to keep it in order and keep up with it fastest way to do this is to keep it color coordinated within those sections we created trying to keep the colors in sections is just more visually pleasing easier to find what you need keeping all the hangers one type of hanger i got some heat for that in one of my videos i think it was like an old video somebody was just like oh my god your hangers are all different it's awful why are hangers so i just have some basic white plastic ones from amazon all right let's take a quick look pjs on the bottom everything gets rolled because it's so much easier socks and tights and stuff here i've got my purses some jewelry uh belts i need the stool for this part because i'm a shorty so i'm keeping my like athletic shorts and leggings and kind of like workout stuff tank tops some t-shirts all in here and it's really not perfectly rolled up guys it's like a quick roll i don't care for it to be perfect but these things just keep it nice and organized up here I actually just use my regular dividers because these are so bulky, as well as these additional sweatsuits. These are more like matching sweatsuits, another matching sweatsuit. And again, I won't be wearing those as it gets warmer outside, but, but I was just trying to find an alternative because I didn't want to buy yet another drawer. So that fit perfectly in there. Over at the top, we've got my shoes and then swimwear little sun hat. So now the floors are clear, which is very nice to see because it was, it was getting pretty gross down there. This is all gonna be going to the basement in a bin as things that I'm hoping to get rid of. If I reach for any of it, then I'll keep it. Otherwise, in about six months, I will be donating it all. Okay guys, I really hope that this was a helpful video. If um, anything, I hope it just motivated you to get in your closet, especially as a busy mom, and get a few things in order to just make fashion easier. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you also have a tiny master closet. Love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.